Hi, this is Angel Jones. I love great conversations where life's journey is communicated not only through words, but tones and emotions. Explosive expressions that allow you to feel what they felt and learned. A fool learns only from his own mistake, while the wise learn from their own and from those others have made. Thanks for being here with us. Good day, good day, Paula Gregorovich. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful day? I'm doing wonderful here on this beautiful, rainy day. Oh, my. (laughs) Where in the world are you, Paula? uh, Outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and it is um, raining, but we have had so very little rain that it's a beautiful thing. Oh, my uncle told me that it's pretty cold in Philadelphia. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, not bad. Uh, Definitely cold compared to the Caribbean, for sure. (laughs) Okay, okay. But Paula, tell me, which of your talents is responsible for us meeting? (laughs) Which of my talents? My talent to uh, pay attention when people recommend connecting with others. That (laughs) Someone just said that. Would you know? Well, two other, yeah, the conversation before, she just said that. Being able to pay attention when someone posts. <laughs> well, you know, and, and the thing is, is being able to pay attention to the small things that are right in front of you that you can do to, uh, you know, to help others, to add value, to connect. Like when you pay attention to those, they, then you don't have to worry about um, scratching your head about the bigger things. The rest mm, I follows. Love that. I love that. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Like, for for instance, right, we're having this conversation and the small thing of saying Paula G compared to Paula Gregorovich. (laughs) It's a small thing, right? But it is a big thing at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah. It always feels good when people take time to, you know, to figure out, okay, how do I actually pronounce your name? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, well, I have allowed people to go any which way with my name. And now I'm realizing the effects of it because... Um, some people come on and they say Engel with all confidence because they've listened to podcasts where some people are saying Engel and I'm saying, okay, I'm not saying anything. So, uh. Uh, yeah, so I'm, but my wife corrected me about that. So I'm working on that. So the small things do matter. I totally agree with you. Uh, mm. So who did you learn that from? The, that the small things matter? Yeah. Um, well, I, I'd say I first learned it from my my parents, especially my dad. Uh, but I, it really uh, got driven home to me when I was in high school and I was uh, managing, meaning basically I was the gopher and helping out uh, <laughs> on the women's basketball team. And the coach at the time talked about, you know, little things do matter. And I, in fact, I probably still have a bumper sticker in my childhood room back home uh, that says little things do matter. Wow. Had that for a long time. Wow. Seems as though we're connecting the dots here all of a sudden. Your tone drop yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and uh, to me, the little things are big things because anymore it seems like people are so busy or distracted or whatever else that, um, you know, a little thing really doesn't go unnoticed. Yeah, I agree. Have you decided why you will continue to repeat the skill of focusing on the small things? How will I repeat the skill? Well, well, not really how. Have you decided why you will? Oh, why I will. Yeah. I, uh, You know, why? Because every time I do it, it, it matters. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, even for myself, I'm into like craft food and yeah, you know, like I enjoy local local food and I like, uh, you know, craft beer and, and wine and, and, you know, really premium coffee. Like I like these kind of things that are done with... Uh, uh, I mean, because obviously you can get a cup of coffee or you could get any old wine. You can get anything. But I like the ones that are done with, like, a, intention. And so then it's the little things that make a big difference. Like, mm-hmm. recently I've been playing around with learning how to brew better coffee at home using, you know, premium beans that I get from a, a fair trade roaster locally. Well, the, I, the act of measuring, like, that's my thing the last two days, of learning about how to measure your water and your coffee beans. Hmm. And you might think, okay, well, you know, you're being awfully fussy, Paula, uh, which would be many people's answer. But I thought, no, like, and as I measured something today, it's like, boom, the the bells went off. I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, okay, this was a way to actually precisely dial in 
what I, I would enjoy. Mm -hmm. So the same thing with, uh, you know, anywhere else in your life, how you can precisely dial in uh, the experience that you might want to have. Mm -hmm. I love that. Tell me about your company then. It seems as though that works right, perfect right there. Yeah, so uh, my company is the Apology Company, because again, no one would ever be able to spell my last name uh, <laughs> in a search engine. And what I really do is work with business owners, help them take charge of their time, technology, and productivity so that they're not only more profitable in the bottom line, but also experience the profit that I believe is even more important, and that is the wealth of being able to have uh, choices and time to do the things that you love to do uh, beyond beyond business. I mean, people might say, "Well, I love my business, so that's my hobby." Well, we that's pretty one dimensional. I'm, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm more about helping people uh, create what they want so that it, it fulfills all of their life and all of the things that matter to them, not just one little corner of their life, like professionally. Mm -hmm. Love that. Love that. Share with me one thing that you've done consistently over the past three years, please. Oh, well, there's so many things that I've done consistently. Well, exercise is something I always do consistently just because I really love it. But one thing that I would say that has made a big difference in my uh, business and in my life has been getting even more serious about employing systems. And by systems, I don't necessarily mean technology. Sometimes technology is at play. But systems like repeatable processes. So it's a small thing, again, back to the small things, uh, but a repeatable process that then allows you to be at your best. So I've implemented some systems around how I handle my money that comes in and, and, and how it gets handled and distributed, like good habits around that, and uh, as well as, as small systems around dealing with customers. And the list goes on and on, but the important part is just really that that trigger of saying, how can I systematize this? Not to robotize it or get less personal, but more importantly, um, so that you can then focus on the things that matter, like having a conversation with your clients instead of just dithering about with some other stuff. Love it. Your clear path to profit, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how does it make you feel? Uh, how does that focus make me feel? Well, not, no, let's deal with um, how you've systemized things. And now, as you said, you are able to have that conversation, you know, when it matters. So you're able to do the things yeah. that bring more value. How does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel both uh, confident and uh, it helps me feel more uh, connected hmm. to what matters. Hmm. Love it. All right, Paula, we're having fun. Let's have uh -huh. some more fun. Let me now invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Paula, what is your earliest childhood memory? Mm, my earliest childhood memory is my teddy bear. Teddy bear. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How old do you think you were? Uh, I know that my mother sewed it for me when I was about one. Um, so I don't know if that's my first memory, but I can remember even being just, you know, a couple years old. I mean, I slept with the thing till I was 21 years old. So wow. I mean, but I, <laughs> and, he's, and he's retired in a special place in my, in my uh, bedroom. So he doesn't fall apart, but I can remember when I was really, really small, you know, just always having my bear. Hmm. Why do you think this memory is so clear? Uh, I think it's so clear because it was so full of love and the connection that I had, hmm. uh, with my mom. Hmm. There was some where we, you were talking and, um, right. So, all right. So my interpretation of this thought picture, Ooh, can I, can I go at it? Sure. Ooh, yeah. Thank you. So yeah, the thing you were talking about when you were speaking about the small things and how they matter and then, you know, you're measuring stuff and it came to me, love. It's the difference, right? Like when you were talking about mm -hmm. the coffee, like mm -hmm. when someone, the person who is making that coffee, the way you're making it, it's because there's love in it. There's a level of love, a fundamental that then brings mm -hmm. it to even much more of a value. Isn't that accurate? Yeah, because when you taste something or you see a piece of art or something that's crafted with with that intention and that love, you feel it, whether it's a, a homemade meal uh, from someone. It, it doesn't have to be complex, mind you. It can just be simple, but it, it you just feel that come through. And here it is. Your mother took the time to sew this teddy bear for you, and the love was there. 
in the little mm. thing. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. If we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? Oh, when I was 12, I have no idea. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Let's see. I guess I would have been in 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 junior high school. Maybe I, uh, I don't know. It was typical typical like eighties music. Um, let's just say, huh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could think of things I listened to at the time, All like right. the Cars and the you know bands, but I can't say that they were my my favorite. All uh, right. well, we could leave yeah. that alone if you want yeah. to. Then, yeah. All right, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form, so it's yes or no. Paula, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Uh, yes. Are you married? Yes. Do you have children? No, just cats. All right, they register as well. Do you believe in God? Uh, yes, in a sort of a, you know, nebulous way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have an inner circle of friends? Uh, very small. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No, don't don't have cable. <laughs> wow. What about screen time, the phone and or the computer? Is it more than eight hours a day or less than eight hours a day? Uh, less than eight hours a day. All right. Paula, this was a great pleasure. I did have fun with this conversation. Before you <laughs> leave... Before you leave, though, is there anything you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Um, I would just share that you always learn more by doing something than thinking about it. So, uh, you know, much like you are doing it with your 12-minute convos, you know, if you've got an idea, put it into action. See what happens. Hmm, love it. Paula Gregorovich. Ooh, I got it, right? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I'm taking you on, on tour with me, yeah. Uh, thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you for having me. Amazing audience, before you leave, there's one person I'd like to introduce you to, Amanda Jones. She is my wife and her passion is to educate, encourage, and empower. Hi, I'm Amanda Jones and I'm a registered nurse. Do you or someone you know have diabetes? According to the International Diabetes Federation, in 2015 worldwide, 415 million people were living with diabetes. Just as that figure is overwhelming, so too can the effects of diabetes be. So, to help simplify diabetes for both adult and child, I've used rhymes in my books the ABCs of Diabetes for Children, and Poems for Patients, a focus on diabetes. At its simplest, rhymes help us to remember. If you, a child or friend, want an easy, reader-friendly way to know about diabetes, then get a copy of these books. For more details, you can go to poemsbyag.com. That's poems by eg.com